Ladies and gents, welcome to the video, I'm Get Good Guy, and recently I made a video about easy ways to improve your game and start picking up more kills than deaths. And a lot of people really enjoyed it, found it helpful, and told me they'd like more videos like that. Basic stuff that's easy to implement, rather than just always advanced or really in-depth concepts, etc. So I figured why not? Today I'm going to go over 20 tips that have drastically improved my accuracy whilst playing Battlefield 5 and FPS games in general over the past 20 years or so, taking me from a guy who aimed as if he had no thumbs originally to someone with a top 3% accuracy rate in BF5 or something along those lines. Not incredible or anything, but certainly very solid considering I use all kinds of guns, I pre-fire corners, I suppress people at range, etc. And you can honestly make these improvements too as the tips are super, super simple to learn and just require practice on each one. They'll help the less able and average players whilst also being a good reminder of what to do if you're already a very accurate player. I did make another video about winning more gunfights about a month month or two ago, so this video will include a few tips from that one as well, but we'll be looking at things much more specifically today, adding some extra details and throwing out a lot more advice than in that video when it comes to improving your aim and overall accuracy. And so let's get into this. In no particular order, I'll run through all of these as quickly as I can, so as not to take up too much of your time and where applicable, I've put together footage to illustrate what I'm talking about in the background. When not applicable, it's just footage there for your enjoyment. So first tip. Warm up first. Warm those hands up people. If you don't have great hand dexterity or movement first thing in the morning, if you're rusty after having not played for a while, if you've been playing a different game that messes with your muscle memory, or if your hands don't work well in the cold, whatever it may be, if you don't want to deal with that effect of your performance, warm your hands up. Shoot some AI in combined arms. Go to the practice range. Play a story mission. If you're on PC, maybe use an aim training game like Mouse Accuracy or Aiming Pro. This can all genuinely make a big difference and I highly recommend it as someone who's done plenty of live videos without warming up and has suffered the consequences. Next tip, control that recoil. Yes, this is as basic as it seems, but still to this day, I have people question if I'm using a Cronus Max or something in order to cheat and take away recoil, which I'm not, and I think some of my footage shows this very obviously. But just learn how much each weapon kicks and pull down on the stick or your mouse to mitigate it. Not a heavy jolt downwards, just apply steady pressure to keep things as level as you can. It's it takes practice but it will eventually become second nature as the muscle memory builds until you won't even have to think about doing it anymore. And of course you can pick specializations that help to reduce your recoil on weapons that you feel are too unstable, especially for horizontal recoil as that's less easy to combat. Next tip, get the right sensitivity for you. If you're over aiming, as in going past the target and having to come back to it on a regular basis, turn your sensitivity down. If you're under aiming, as in it's taking you too long to get to the target, turn your sensitivity sensitivity up. Don't just assume that the default one is what you should be using. Don't just assume that what someone suggested in a video is the right sensitivity for you. Take the time to work it out for yourself and over time maybe lower it or increase it in order to either gain extra precision or decrease the time in which you can react. And that applies for both soldier aim speed and soldier aim down sight speed. Next tip, use strafing as in moving side to side while you're aiming. You don't always need to correct your aim by specifically moving the cursor. Sometimes it's better to physically move your soldier or do a combination of the two. You can use your feet to line up a shot more easily sometimes. Plus, strafing makes you a harder target to hit at the same time. I see far too many people stood still whilst firing weapons that you don't need to use in a stationary manner. So start moving those feet when viable, but not with weapons that are inaccurate when moving. Next tip, correct your aim. It's way too common an occurrence for people to start firing, start missing, and then basically just go, well, I've messed up, I guess I'll die. Nope, there's nothing stopping you from actually stopping firing to reacquire your aim and maybe take the enemy out. Maybe even throw in some movement while you do it to throw your enemy's aim off. Do anything you can to win that gunfight, even if you're screwing up, rather than accepting death before it's even happened or necessary. Next tip, take your time. If you're using a weapon that requires precision, don't feel like you have to take fast shots because that's what study does or whatever. Build up your ability over time. If you need to hit headshots with a bolt action, take whatever time the enemy allows you to in order to hit those headshots. Over time you'll improve and your speed will increase naturally. And this goes for a lot of weapons really. Don't rush when you don't need to. 
Next tip, don't be afraid to miss shots. Yep, straight after telling you to take your time is telling you that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's about balance people and basing things upon the weapon you're using and the situation you're in. Take shots when it seems like the right thing to do, even if you might miss. Because while high accuracy is a great thing, it doesn't win you games if you aren't trying to kill the enemy. Pre-fire corners, jump shot, suppress people, take pot shots, focus on being successful rather than boosting a specific stat. Next tip, ADS field of view setting. Test this one out. Without it, you get the normal zoomed in field of view when you aim and thus normal visible recoil. If you turn it on, your field of view when you aim matches that of when you don't, thus providing less visible recoil. Also, the higher your field of view, the greater the effect. Some people swear by this setting. I personally don't currently use it, but I intend to try it out for a video soon. Some will love it, some will find it hard to see what's going on and hate it, test it out and see which you prefer. Next tip, test the aim snap setting. This is if you use a controller, if you have this on, your aim will be pulled to the enemy if you aim near enough to them. If you have it off, you won't get that assistance, and you can set the level that works for you. As always, test it out for yourself, because for some it's helpful, for others it's a hindrance, especially when trying to snipe or when aiming at multiple targets. Next tip, test the standard aim assist setting. This is aim slowdown or how sticky the aim feels when you're aiming at an enemy. Having this high will make it easier to stay on target as long as they don't move too much. Having it low will make it easier to throw your aim around and switch between targets quickly. Find what works for you, again I'm stressing that, rather than what others suggest or worrying about what people think about using it or not using it. Next tip, utilize semi-fire mode on weapons that have it. On console you change fire mode by holding Y or triangle. On PC you'll have to work it out for yourself and the game displays which fire mode you're in in the bottom right. Obviously this makes being accurate much easier at some ranges with some weapons. Personally, I use semi-fire mode on the Breda or Breda, as you see here, almost all the time. It's fantastically good and nowhere near enough people actually think to try the alternate fire modes on guns. Perhaps some people don't even know it's there. Try it out. Next tip, learn bullet velocity. Battlefield has travel time. These are actual projectiles. This isn't a hit scan game. Learn to lead your target if they're moving. Aim ahead of where they're going. The further away they are, the more you need to lead your target. The slower your bullet velocity, the more you need to lead the target. Mass Master the bullet velocity of the specific weapon you're using. If you're struggling to land damage and the weapon you're using has high velocity bullets as a specialization, try it out. If you know nothing about bullet velocity values in this game, use sym.gg, that's S-Y-M dot G-G, to look up the in-depth stats of the BF5 weapons. I don't want to see more people trying to shoot straight at moving targets and complaining about bullets not registering. Next tip, learn to burst fire. Using a weapon that doesn't have semi-auto fire mode available, or in a situation where you can't or don't want to switch between fire modes. Use burst fire. Let a few rounds out and then release. Repeat that. It's not rocket science. It seems obvious, but once again, not enough people actually use it. And something I haven't mentioned before is micro bursting. Basically tapping the trigger as fast as you can with an automatic weapon. Some guns perform really well like this. So give it a try and see what it does and doesn't work on. You'll thank me later. Next tip, play at the correct range. This one is so obvious and so simple and I don't need to go into any detail really, I just need to remind you to play where your weapon is good or switch to another weapon for the situation you're stuck in. If you don't know what range is optimal for your weapon, once again use sim.gg for those detailed stats. Next tip, use the bipod. If you're using a gun that has a bipod, utilize it. It makes controlling the weapon far easier. Move cover to cover to make the most of it or get used to dropping to the ground quickly. Don't forget that you have it available, but also don't force yourself to use it when you don't need to. Don't end up as a slug with tunnel vision. As ever, it's about balance. Next tip, mirror enemy movement. This is to do with moving your feet or strafing again, but more specific than that. If the enemy is moving, you can strafe to match it. If the enemy themselves are strafe shooting at you, make sure you try to strafe as well. Keep your aim on target with this or get the enemy to miss. It's very, very important. Next tip, peek shoot. Use cover to take shots and then avoid enemy fire. This works best with semi-automatic or bolt action weapons. Weapons. Basically, what you're looking to do is control the gunfight, limit the damage you take, avoid flinch hurting your aim, and make the most of an advantageous situation. Next tip, spray and pray. I think it's really important to mention in a video about accuracy that sometimes the right thing to do is spray your weapon. Please don't focus on accuracy too much. 
Some weapons are supposed to be wild, that's why they have a high rate of fire. And sometimes firing from the hip is exactly what you should do. In fact, SMGs in this game especially have excellent hip fire. Use it. Next tip, select the right sight. Please pick your sight or optic based upon what works for you, the gun or the situation. Don't just use something because it's what you've always done and don't just use something because someone said it was the best. If you need range, take a look at the scopes. If you're only going to be in close quarters, think about the NIDAR or reflex sights, etc. Using the wrong sight for you will hinder your performance. And my final tip, customize those sights. Use colors that stand out for you for your crosshair and reticule. Increase or decrease the glow of your NIDAR and reflex sights if they're bothering you or not standing out enough. Take the time to fine tune these things and reap the benefits. And those are my easy tips to hugely increase your accuracy and overall aim efficiency. Let me know what you think in the comments below and leave your own tips there as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leaving a like is massive for me. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel to grow. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing and maybe turning on notifications to stay up to date with the massive amount of content I got coming out and will continue to put out. And all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description and my pinned comment. Here is the Board of Awesome for the epic people who already support me on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes and I love them all deeply and of course, often. If you want to join them on the Board of Awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with all that said, I'm Get Good Guy and I'll see you next time, laters. Uh, this is obvious, lack of a team balancer, bugs, you know, whatever, you know, I, I'm no, I don't want to go through all the problems today. But when the time is right, I promise we will be coming back to these issues. I already voiced them a little bit on Twitter here and there when I'm playing, but only because they're issues that are long-standing and I feel should have been fixed prior to all this anyway. 